Reading Pioneers is proud to present Stories of the Red Rat and the Red Hen, Volume 9, written by Linda Von Wartburg. The Red Rat translates. The Red Rat is home. He drops his backpack, plop, skids into the kitchen, and runs smack dab into the Red Hen. What's on your mind, Mr. Twister? She asks. Today was my favorite things day, the Red Rat says. I told about when the giant rat of Sumatra made me his deputy in my dream. Everyone clapped. The Dormouse told about playing his violin for the team. Everyone clapped again. Then the chipmunk said, My favorite things are dinosaurs of the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous periods. My special favorite is a small bipedal dinosaur form called saltipus, which means hopping foot. Well, my goodness says the hen. What happened then? The chinchilla made a face and said, Really? The lemmings were whispering, OMG! Boring! Then the wharf rat yelled, You make us feel stupid with your big words! And why are you flapping your hands like a bird? Weirdy, weirdy, wordy, birdie! Oh dear, says the hen. What happened then? The chipmunk ran to the restroom to hide. She locked the door and cried and cried. It's her own fault anyway, says the rat, for using big words, like a stuck-up brat. Her voice is always so even and cool. She thinks she's the smartest one in school. Maybe her tone is an accident, says the hen. Maybe looking smarty is not her intent. Take this special stone to give her, and then ask her what's up when she's acting peculiar. The next day at recess, the red rat finds the chipmunk sitting alone. Here, he says, I brought you a special stone. Hmm, says the chipmunk. This is a coprolith, otherwise known as coprolite. See what you do? The red rat asks. No wonder nobody is friends with you. Why can't you use regular words like the rest of us? You always make everything seem like a test of us. I don't mean to, says the chipmunk. I don't know how not to. Coprolite is the term for fossilized poop. I can't change that to please the group. It certainly is a very nice specimen. Just what I need for my fossil collection. See, there's your problem, says the rat. Your voice is always kind of flat. Your words say you like it, but your tone says you're mocking. I can't figure out what you mean when you're talking. If you feel delighted, why don't you sound excited? The chipmunk says, It's not by choice. My feelings don't show up in my face or my voice. They can't reach the surface from way deep inside. They don't fly out like yours do. They stay down and hide. So my tone is even and sometimes flat. There's nothing that I can do about that. I use exact words, but my words never count. Everyone relies on my tone to figure me out, which doesn't work. So they think I'm a jerk. Okay, says the rat. I get that. You sound stuck up, but you're really not. It's that whole tone thing that you haven't got. But what about when you flap your hands? That's another thing nobody understands. I don't flap my hands, the chipmunk says. They flap themselves. It's not a big deal. 
It just helps how I feel. Okay, says the rat. I understand. But what about when you cry and hide? You act up worse than if someone died. The chipmunk says, It's not deliberate. It just happens. I can't stop it. When lights are bright and sounds are loud, and no one wants to have me around, my body hurts inside. When they don't understand what I'm trying to say and turn my meaning another way, it hurts and hurts inside. And when they call me weirdy, weirdy, wordy birdie, it hurts and hurts and hurts inside. Sometimes I hide inside my head. I think about dinosaurs and lying in bed. Sometimes I pretend that inside I am dead. But sometimes it gets to be too much to bear, and I disintegrate in midair. The sadness of being who I am, a chipmunk whom nobody understands, who hurts inside and is never at ease, who cannot find a way to please, makes me cry and cry and pull my hair and hit myself from sheer despair. I have to run away and hide. I can't let the others see inside. Which makes it worse and me seem weirder. I think things will get worse before they get better. Well, says the rat, you do not have it easy. What if you and I form up a team against teasing? We'll tell them all to ignore your tone and listen to your words alone. And you're right about flapping. It's not a big deal. You should see the porcupine do a cartwheel. It's nothing to notice, and I've got your back. Now how about you and I go get a snack? The Red Rat translates again. It is lunchtime on a rainy day. The cafeteria is loud and steamy. Only the chipmunk is sitting alone. The red rat carries his tray to her corner. What's happening? He says. I am sitting here, says the chipmunk, and you just came over. I would think it would be obvious. Has your brain gone on the fritz? No, it hasn't, says the rat. I wasn't trying to ask about that. What I meant was, how's it going? How is what going? asks the chipmunk. The red rat says, nothing is actually going. It's a metaphor, a turn of phrase. It means something other than what it says. But since plain speaking works best for you, then speaking plainly is what we'll do. I am glad to see you, he says. I would like to eat lunch with you. I hope that's okay. Oh, says the chipmunk. Now I see. It's fine if you want to sit by me. Now, says the rat, ask me how I'm doing. I'll say, fine. And how about you? Then you say, I'm doing fine too. But I'm not doing fine, the chipmunk says. To say I am would be lying. Let me explain, the red rat says. When someone says, I am fine, what she is really saying is, I greet you. No, that's not what she is really saying, says the chipmunk. What she is really saying is, I am fine. Which is not true. Why not just say, I greet you? It's called small talk, says the rat. Little teeny tiny talk, chit chat. How about this weather? Hot enough for you? How about that team? Great enough for you? Why even bother? The chipmunk asks. Blabbering dumb stuff all day is a poor use of hours that could better be spent on dinosaurs. 
You're missing the point of chit chat, says the rat. Small talk is a form of hand flapping for talkers. It is calming and soothing. It supports social fusing. Poof, on that, says the chipmunk. What a big waste of time. At least when my hands flap, I can still use my mind. I like real talking, not stupid chit chat. Let's talk about dinosaurs. I much prefer that. Not everyone wants to talk for hours, says the rat. About dinosaurs. Okay, says the chipmunk. How about this? For ten minutes, I'll talk about saltipus. Then you can talk small on a dumb sports team. I'll pretend that I care and go, mm-hmm. The red rat says, great, now you get the picture. Where is it? The chipmunk asks. Bamboozled again by a metaphor, says the rat. Let's move on to the dinosaur. Now tell me, what is all the fuss about little hopping saltipus? The red rat goes to a birthday party. It's recess. Everyone is playing Red Rover, except the chipmunk. The red rat walks to her spot by the fence and says, How are you? The chipmunk looks glum. You're supposed to say, I'm fine, how are you? Says the rat. I'm not fine. How are you? The chipmunk says. She looks very glum. You can't tell a lie to save your life, says the rat. It's a troublesome virtue, but never mind. I came to ask if you need transportation to the Chinchilla's birthday celebration. There'll be a bouncy house and a pony ride and a four-layer cake with candy inside. No, says the chipmunk. I wasn't invited, but I don't care. What does it matter if I'm not there? I don't even like pony rides. And I hate birthday cakes besides. Well, says the rat, we'll see about that. The next morning, the red rat digs out the deputy badge given to him by the giant rat of Sumatra. He pins it on his chest. He marches to school. He spots the chinchilla. He is really mad. What the hella? He shouts. How could you leave the chipmunk out? It was a slam dunk to exclude the chipmunk, says the chinchilla. Her clothes are too loose. She wears her socks inside out. She lacks a shred of social clout. She flaps. She's rude. She cries. She pouts. I can't have her in my friend collection. I have to think of my reputation. The squirrels would boycott my celebration. Surely you can see my risk. That chipmunk is dangerous. Well, says the rat, that is one way to see it. A wrong way, of course, but so be it. It sounds to me like you're being snooty because you are afraid of cooties. Which, to refresh your memory, are imaginary. If the popular squirrels flapped their hands, we'd all be flapping to beat the band. Your hands hang there like two dead fish, but nobody gives you grief for it. It's not like she's socking you in the face. Give her a break, for goodness sakes. The chinchilla thinks for a minute. Then he says, If you give me three presents and she gives me four, I'll have seven presents more. If the popular squirrels boycott me, I'll still be ahead in presents by three. So what if they bail in a huff? It would be worth it to get more stuff. The red rat says, Thanks very much for your greed. I mean, niceness. Whatever it takes, you are brave to invite us. The chipmunk is sitting alone, again when the red rat finds her. Guess what? Says the rat. 
It was all a mistake. You are invited for games and cake. Now we have to find some presents, seven of them to be precise. Why so many? asks the chipmunk. For one chinchilla. Because he likes presents more than his friends, says the rat. The chipmunk says, how about this? We give him seven scale models of saltipus. The rat says, you would like that. I know, but he would not. He likes brand name items that are store bought. How about, the chipmunk says, seven t-shirts printed with chinchilla praise. The chipmunk and the rat ponder and think and write down ideas. In no time at all, the chipmunk is finished. I am Godzilla, the power chinchilla. Chill like the chilla. Don't miss with the chinchilla. I'm the chinchilla. Get used to it. Chinchilla is my co-pilot. Bazinga! I'm the chinchilla. Chinchillas! Better in every way. Wow! Says the red rat. You are already done? I haven't even thought of one. We'll print them up at the t-shirt shop and wrap each one in a separate box. What a pile that will make! I can't wait for the birthday cake! Speech Day Today is Speech Day. The theme is Somewhere Over the Rainbow. All the rodents take a turn. The wharf rat says, Somewhere over the rainbow, I live in the rich house and not in the poor house. I win all the contests without having to cheat. Everyone loves me. The Dormouse says, Somewhere over the rainbow, I am as big as a dinosaur. I am so big that it's easy to be brave. Everyone admires me. The Chinchilla says, Somewhere over the rainbow, I am the king of the world. I am famous and important. Everyone listens to me. The Capybara says, Somewhere over the rainbow, I walk around without other animals sitting on me. Nobody thinks of me as a sofa. Everyone respects me. The Chipmunk says, Somewhere over the rainbow, small talk is against the law. Everyone understands why dinosaurs are wonderful. My expression looks happy, and my voice sounds friendly, and no one thinks that I don't have feelings. Everyone accepts me. The rodents are silent. Then the red rat claps. Then the kangaroo rat claps and the dormouse, and the wharf rat. Then everyone claps. They feel happy. The end. Hang in there, polar bear. Thank you, pioneers, for reading with us today to the book, Stories of the Red Rat and the Red Hen, Volume 9 by Linda Von Warburg. Comment below your thoughts about the stories, and don't forget to click the like button to show your support. Linda has been gracious for letting me read her stories here on my YouTube channel, and I am so thankful, especially for this book, which focuses on learning about autism. This book is very special to me as my nephew has autism, and I've seen the struggles he goes through as he's growing up. The key lesson of acceptance is an important one, and one I hope you all understand by the end of the book. To follow Linda, you can visit her YouTube channel, where she reads her books and has more insight into the morals and lessons of her stories. Also, you can follow her on Amazon by purchasing your own copies of her books to read in your home or library. Both links are available in the description box down below. If you have a book you'd like to be read on this channel, please send me an email, contact at readingpioneers.com, and we can turn it into the next read aloud. 
you should also subscribe to stay updated with future read alouds coming soon, as well as sharing this video with friends and family who you think could benefit from this powerful book about autism. Unfortunately, this is it for today. While waiting for the next upload, you can check out Linda's other books, Stories of the Red Rat and the Red Hen Volume 6 over here, and Part 1 of Volume 7 just below it. Thanks again readers for joining us today, and until next time, I hope you all have an amazing day. Bye bye